Now on to the Lux or the Land Use Compatibility Statement. <clears throat> so this is basically a dumb piece of paperwork that states <laughs> that the government or your county, I guess. Um, yeah, I guess it technically. Okay, so the Lux is a form of communication between the county and state that claims that the intended use of the property fits within the previously designated uses of that specific property and the overall goal of those in charge. So it's basically saying that they're okay with you doing what you want to do on the property. It has nothing to do with um, anything else really. But for some reason, even though, for instance, in the OLCC system, uh, or the uh, Oregon Liquor and Cannabis Commission, um, here in Oregon, obviously, <laughs> um, when you're applying for a license in the state, it asks, uh, or it says, that your Lux is optional. However, finding out that, well, if you don't have your Lux in the file, then your application isn't really considered complete even though it is complete but it's kind of messed up um so just get it out of the way get it done um all you have to do is and ideally there should be a form on your on your county's website um they'll talk about a land use compatibility compatibility statement you'll print off a little application download it and, or whatever um and fill it out it's just essentially what you're trying to do on the property, um, where your address is, um, who owns it, blah, blah, blah. Um, you'll go to your planning department, you'll bring that to them with a couple hundred bucks or whatever, um, and then they'll turn around and give you a little piece of paper with a stamp on it. Um, and that stamp, that's, that's everything. You know, they don't care if you have a copy without a stamp, they want your stamp. So make sure you get your Lux. Um, what else? What else? Okay, so now we're on overlays. All right, so overlays are essentially zones, not zoning, but they're zones that have been placed over an area that designated as something, again, such as an airport approach or concern. Um, in my specific case, a deer and elk winter range or some type of cultural overlay. So there's obviously plenty, plenty different uh, overlays, but those are just some of the ones that I'm personally familiar with. They will dictate things such as setbacks, um, what new structures are allowed, um, and even the vegetation that's allowed around a certain structure. So with me, in this deer and elk winter range overlay, um, I had to deal with fish and wildlife. So after I got approved for the county um, on my application, they send it off, and I'll go into all this, don't worry. Um, we're only on step two, uh, which is crazy, right? Um, <laughs> so. After you get approved for your application um, on a conditional approval, they send it off to all the correlating agencies just to see if there's any issues with it. And one of the, I mean, it'll be like roads, it'll be fish and wildlife. Um, so with fish and wildlife, apparently there is a deer and elk winter range overlay on my property. I actually checked this because I, I, I do my research. Um, and I even went into their office and showed them specifically that on the piece of paper, according to Jackson County, I am not in a deer and elk winter range overlay. Now, for whatever reason, that's incorrect. Now, the reason this was an issue was because my original plot plan was to have, was it one, two, three, four, about four, green, four 30 by 96 greenhouses, and then a couple hoop houses, um, just on this little top terrace, actually. Maybe it was two terraces, can't remember. Um, irrelevant. The uh, the fish, the fish and wildlife stated, or fish and wildlife stated that this deer and elk winter range overlay was an issue because the new construction of my greenhouses would affect the roaming patterns or the migration path of deer and elk. Now I understand that. Um, I completely get that. However, what I didn't understand was how the new construction didn't do that already. I didn't understand how the clearing of trees, the putting up of a new fence, a road, everything did not already affect 
the deer and elk in general. But in order to get my license as soon as possible, I decided not to argue that and just go with it, which I would recommend to you. Just get your license and do what I'm about to do. So the other option or the issue was I basically had to remove those greenhouses or I had to move them within, I believe, 300 feet of an existing structure that already, quote unquote, um, disrupted the migration path in that area, which was my house. But for me to move, basically I would have had to move the greenhouses 700 feet. I would have had to clear another 700 by 300, actually more than that. It just wasn't gonna happen and I don't have enough places where I can revegetate. So I couldn't even, consciously do that and not to mention I mean dealing with the forest it just it wasn't going to happen so although I could have done that I decided not to um, and I removed the greenhouses now what I plan on doing is next year I plan on going back and making that argument is that well now that I already have my license um I think that their overlay or the migration path has already been disturbed. It's been a year, 365 days. Why can't I put the greenhouses up now? So that's what I would do if I were you. Um, for time's sake, I think it's worth just ignoring it if there is an issue for you. But definitely have a plan. I mean, these are just people. 